Welcome to Pateo Television. My name is Johan Oldenkamp, and the special guest of this episode, this 49th episode of Pateo TV, is Mr. Joseph Gregory Hallett. Greg, welcome into the show. Thank you, Johan. Could you, before you start, we start this uh, talk, give a little bit of information about your background so that the audience have an idea what kind of man you are? Where were you born, for instance? What was your, uh, <laughs> your home country? Okay, uh, I was born in New Zealand, named after the you know place in South Holland, and um, well, actually, probably it's Northern Netherlands, isn't it? Zealand? No, it's in the south of the Netherlands. Yeah, it's south yeah. south of the Netherlands. Um, and I've written fifteen books, and about five of them on New Zealand, exposing the corruption of the New Zealand government and judiciary and police. And I did that from about two thousand of nineteen ninety nine to about 2007. I wrote four books in 2007, and um, I haven't been allowed to work anywhere in the world since 2007, since I published about nine or so books. Um, so what I what I found, and what other people are finding out now, is that the governments and judiciaries are just a mafia, and they all obey the royal families and the British royal family, which are flat lie royal. They're absolutely fake, right? So um, I've, I was the royal biographer for four years and I wrote a five volume set on the British royal family and who the true British royal family are. And I exposed about 40 royal marks that Queen Victoria gave the royal family, um, a couple which I own now. Um, and um, that absolutely set in stone that Queen Victoria had a legitimate firstborn son called Prince Marcus Manuel, and she was married to the second in line to the throne, who was blind Prince George of Cumberland, who became King George V of Hanover. Um, so I wrote three books on that, and a lot of the information is heavily codified, and they brought me in to decipher the royal marks, and sometimes I was deciphering them instantly, going, oh, that, that's a blind man, you know? And, and they had the marks for, well, um, 150 years and they, they weren't quite getting it. So um, I was brought in to decipher all the royal marks and in doing that I also um, was given some information and wrote two books on the Jesus lineage which is that there were two main Jesuses. Who were, Jesus was the fifth most common name in Jerusalem um, and there were five or six Jesus, two main Jesus, and they both went to the Algarve, and then one went to England and founded Lord Mayor of London, which is actually the true king of the United Kingdom. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, um, and in that time, I've been just heavily sabotaged, poisoned, things have broken down, cars have been stolen, cameras have been stolen, funds have been stolen, removed. Um, my status on the internet is just ever diminishing. <laughs> you know, my hit count after I do an interview, my hit count actually goes down. Okay. <laughs> right? Um, so um, all of this stuff shows that there's a big conspiracy not to get the truth out. And the truth is that we are living under a flat lie royal British family who are enacting the Bible and have acknowledged me as a participant in the Bible, like king of the self, would be me. Um, so what I've found is that the um, magical days of, which amounts to three and a half years and 1,290 days and 1,335 days, etc., they all come from when I lodged a claim in the Queen's Bench High Court uh, in England claiming Prince Pretender status. Right, and from that time, which is March, April, May 2015, to the Paradise Fires, um, 8th of November to the 25th of November 2018, that that is the allotted time in the Bible. Right, and there's another date in between, which was the 15th of September 2017. And that was when Hurricane Jose was, which went from the 6th of September to the 22nd of September. It was turned off on the 14th, 15th of September, around about 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. for 24 hours. 
which is exactly my birthday. So you've got this hurricane, this massive hurricane going through, and it's got my first name, Jose, which is Joseph. And then it come, comes along for like 6th to the 14th of September, boom, and then it's no longer a hurricane for 24 hours, and then it's a hurricane again from the 15th to the 22nd. So, and what the Bible says about that is that everyone will look up and wonder. Right? So that's actually another marker in the timeline, and I've just finished the graphic now, and the latest obstruction I've got is um, I've got a new keyboard, yeah, because the old one was stuffed, and the bottom keys, um, all the bottom right keys are sticking, so every sentence I write has four spelling mistakes in it. So, so that's why I didn't get to, oh, that's the excuse I'll use, that I get, didn't get to do all of my graphics. Okay. Right? But what I did, what I found when um, looking at the Bible is you've got to look at the definitions of words mm -hmm. and you've got to look at things like the latest um, media releases that, say, the Jews are putting out about the Bible, how they're all of a sudden claiming that there's been a shift in time of 146 years and the Jews are now 146 years closer to when their Messiah or the Messiah or the Mosiac has to appear, not may appear, but has to appear. And that is in 57 years' time. Has to appear. Can appear anywhere in between, but has to appear in 57 years, right? But there, you know, so... It goes on, it goes on, and, and, it's, and it's just absolutely full of intrigue, and it's related to uh, Jerusalem becoming the capital of Israel and Jerusalem being given to the Catholic Church and me being registered in the Holy See as a member of the Jesus Mary lineage and all of this stuff happening within six weeks in 2013. Um, and then Trump getting into power and then trumpets being heard underground which is also predicted in the Bible. And I heard it from, from here, up by my oak tree, which is um, exactly 777 metres from me. I've got this, I call it my profile oak tree. It's when I had, where I had my pictures taken, you know, the oak tree behind me. And then um, on, the, um, on uh, Tropical Storm Greg off Mexico, um, that kind of jumped to where I am and it split a third of the oak tree off, which is very rare. And that was also predicted in the Bible and in the Rosicrucian cosmography and in Oak Island, Nova Scotia. The whole treasure of Oak Island is, is related to that. And it, and it just means the oak is material. That's what it means. So there's meanings and meanings and meanings and it's like a study course, you know? So when I got like, one or two or three points out of the Bible. And in order to describe um, what they're actually talking about, I've got, I've got 24 pages of finished printed material just to make one point, you know? And a lot of these points and discoveries in the Bible, they can't actually be made until they happen, yeah? And they can't actually be made until they happen to the person who is the targeted individual that they're happening to and about, right? So um, what I've managed to do is um, decipher this biblical timeline of the 1,290 days, 1,333 day, uh, 1,335 days, and the three and a half years. Yeah. Yeah, that would Just be great. Now, just yeah. finished. Just finished. And one, one, one other thing is, when I finished it, I was actually looking at, I was doing it three days ago on the 18th of January and I'm, and I'm doing this timeline and it's Daniel's dream, right? Right at the end of the timeline, I get the date and it goes 18th of January and I'm going, oh, that's today. <laughs> so I discovered it on the day predicted, you know? So we'll see, we'll see if I can, you know, prove it to um, someone with a PhD, I, I think. <laughs> Have you got a PhD? I've got a PhD, yes, but for what it's worth. So I can, uh, my left hemisphere is working okay, but that's okay. Right. Yeah. But well, I'm, a, I'm a step by step uh, guy, uh, Greg. So um, yeah. uh, what I would like to do is, um, yeah, is to, to, to take the audience and me 
uh, to your uh, conclusion and, and your approach and your, your research results. I did my, some research myself too. About two years ago, I thought I uh, <laughs> fully cracked the code of Daniel, uh, but I have to admit that my conclusion uh, didn't come through. So uh, I'm a bit confused now because I was quite certain. But I have to say I based it on the Zionist agenda, the, the decisions they took, especially the, uh, the, the moment when they had a big meeting in Basel in uh, Switzerland in uh, 1897. And I used that, and I used the day when Jerusalem was conquered in the Six-Day Wars. Those were the two main ingredients on which I based my interpretation. But uh, yeah, the conclusion is, uh, is, is not valid. So <laughs> I'm open for new insights, and that's why uh, I'm very interested in your take on this. Okay, well, I, I, I looked at your stuff, and um, you were talking about that the Antichrist turns up in 2017. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, you weren't entirely wrong, um, but there's two forms of antichrist. There's the A-N-T-E Christ, which means in place of Christ. Yeah. And then there's the A-N-T-I Christ, which is the opposite of Christ. Exactly. Ante means before and the other one is, is against or something. Oh, one, one, one is against Christ. The A-N-T-I is against Christ and A-N-T-E is in place of yeah. Christ right, which is kind of like the second coming, which is a charged word, but in other codes they use vid, V-I-D-E, or V-I-D, like V-I-D-E-O, video, it means um, a likeness, a very good facsimile, right, so it doesn't have to be Christ, it, it can be someone like him, you know, or someone like we imagine him to be, you know, so, um, and what's happened is we've got all these charged words like Christ, right? And Christ means high priest, of all, high priest of all good things. Okay. Right? Well, what do you think it means? I thought it was anointed one. Christos from Greek. Um, well, as, as well, as well. Um, but you've got, you've got all of these words from the various disciplines mm -hmm. um, you've got all of these words like um, uh, you've got Christ that's a charged word but let's say it means high priest of all good things and I've spoken to Christian elders and they go I'm telling you this is what it means you know so they've told me and they're sort of the faithful yeah um, and um, Jesus is um, a person's name, mm -hmm. yeah, and it was the fifth most common name in Jerusalem, and um, uh, then you've got Holy Grail, right, and the Holy Grail was spelt G-R-A-E-L from Charlemagne to Joan of Arc, which is about 800 AD to about 1314, I think she died, or 1413, one of those. So it's, it's the longest serving spelling of Holy Grail, right? And when they, when they um, put people, you know, someone's got to be in the program for things to manifest, right, in some form. And um, you've also got um, Ouroboros, which is the ring around the sun. Uh, and it's, it's like flashes, you know, two snakes around the sun. A serpent um, that eats his own tail. Yeah. yeah. And you've got um, Messiah, and Messiah can mean anointed one, or Christ can mean anointed one, rather, Christ, chrism. And you've got Messiah, and Messiah is um, a prince without a throne, or a king without a throne, or a king without a country, or a prince without a country. Um, and uh, the Christians believe that the Jews believe that the Messiah has had to have achieved something militarily, right? So that's kind of interesting. Um, uh, so what else have we got? We've got, we got the Holy Grail. We've got the Holy Grail cup, right, which is actually the solar chalice of the legislators, Akhenaten and Jesus. So the solar chalice of Akhenaten, Pharaoh Akhenaten, was passed 
by um, um, the Apostle John Mark to Jesus at the Last Supper, and then it spent about a thousand years in Jerusalem, and then it finally came out to um, England, and then to Portugal, and then it was given to us, and I'm the first person to publish images of it. Right. So um, Pharaoh is a name that never existed. It's a title that never existed. Pharaoh, it's actually ruler, not even king, it's ruler. The Egyptian pharaohs were actually rulers. And Pharaoh was a Greek word applied to the Egyptian rulers. And it was based on a temple called Phari. And that became Pharaoh, right? So, um, so you can sort of empower and disempower words. And then you've got the Heb Sed festival as well, which was the Egyptian rulers or pharaohs. Um, after they had ruled for 30 years, they'd have a Heb Sed festival to reinvigorate their rulership. And that was, they would run, down a, run around a rectangle, say the screen, yeah? And then everyone would be around cheering vigorously. And then they would go into a cave and then they would be given some hypnotic herbs or incense or whatever with, by the priests. And then they would have like an out of body or near death experience. And they'd come back with some information that was pertinent to the Ma'at, M-A hyphen A-T, which was the um, uh, all the people living together in harmony and producing. So it would be it would be something that was very good for the whole community. So you've got the Heb Sed Festival, and the Heb Sed Festival is still being run occasionally today. And I did an interview with um, Gemstone University and showed a lot of slides about my Heb Sed Festival and two Heb Sed Festivals. Um, and that actually, I haven't spoken about it yet, but that actually led to um, um, quite a few events in the 1980s, which were quite big. Um, uh, so, you know, then you've got the, um, what's it called? The Georgia Guidestones, mm -hmm. right? And the Georgia Guidestones are actually linked to the end times new age, as well as you've got the people running the end times, two people running the end times and one person running the new age. And that leads to the whole Ouroboros thing. And the end times new age has happened in 2014 and the times of the end has happened in 2017 and when you look at all the requirements of like the second coming jesus christ messiah all that sort of stuff it's actually when you take all the whoa out of it you know, <laughs> yeah and you say well this person has to have done this this and this it's actually not that difficult to um, fulfill. Well, it is, but when, you, when it's done, it's very practical. It's very specific, you know? This happened, this right. happened, this happened. Here's the place, here's the time, here's the location, here's the evidence, here's the illusion in the Bible, here's the illusion in the tradition received, here's the illusion in the Rosicrucian cosmography, here's the illusion in the Book of Predictions, here's the illusion in all the Jewish scriptures. All right? So... What the Bible says when you take out all the Lordy Lord and God and Yahweh and you know all those big things that no one knows what they are, <laughs> when you take all that out, what it says is when these things happen, they'll be very specific, right? And because they're specific and things are specific to a time, a place, a location, and a person, an event that it's only the targeted individual that they happen to who bothers to record them, like with a camera, and bothers to write down what was happening around the time and the measurements and stuff, like using, say, Google Earth, that, that all of the stuff comes into play as being a very definite occurrence that if you took it to an unbiased court and they were looking at evidence, they would go, yes, you own that. You know? <laughs> You know, what's happened, um, what's happened is that the, because all this, this, these predicted events are happening now from 2014 to 2000 and end of 2017, the events 
the predicted events stopped. And the Bible says, and when this happens, that will be the last of the predicted events and they will stop. Um, and they have, you know. So what I've done is I've recorded all the predicted events and they're phenomenal and they're really specific and accurate and definite and codified and obvious. And when they're obvious and they're in your face, you know, it's, it's, um, it's hard to deny. So what they've done with me exposing all these predicted events is coming true is that um, when I actually do a whole lot of visuals, like say if I do 50 visuals or 100 visuals in an interview and show everything so everyone can understand it, I get like 300 hits. And if I just sit back and talk to someone generally without being specific for two hours having a rant, I'll get like 3,000 hits, <laughs> like 10 times as much. You know, So they really don't like the specific stuff being identified. So one very specific thing is the changeover to the end times and new age was on the 16th of August, 2014. So what the powers that be did with the Georgia Guidestones is, and it was in Portugal where I did it. What they did is they got the English and Portuguese or Portuguese Spanish slab with the, you know, it's got language on each side. It's got eight languages, four slabs. And they cut out a cube stone, so it's a void in the top right corner. And then they put in, that was 2013-14. And then in early 2014, they got a blank cube stone and stuck it in there. And then around the 7th of July, 2014, they got a cube stone so you could read 2014 on it. And they stuck it in there. And then... At the end of the 40 days of the new age, which was the 25th of September, 2014, they pulled the cube stone out so you could read it, photograph and read it, and it said 16-8-2014-J-A-M-M-M, right? So it gave the date, 16th of August, 2014, which was actually the date of the end times new age changeover. And um, JAM, you could say, stands for Jesus and Mary, but they said it was joint annual meeting. And the MM is the highest Freemasonry order, but they saw, they took it to be master, um, master Masons, as in stonemasons. So they said it was JAM, MM was joint annual meeting, Master Masons. But it's actually Jesus and Mary, Freemasons' highest order. And MM is also... Marcus Manuel, who was the last true king of England, 1869. So um, all, of, all of this stuff becomes really specific, very, very specific. And then if you look at the Rosicrucian cosmography, it actually gives the um, actual time of the changeover, which was so the first minute of the new age was 2.44 p.m. Um, Portuguese time, which is British, same time as Britain, which was British summertime. Um, you know, so it's GMT plus one. So in terms of GMT, UTC, it was actually 1.44 p.m. Uh, yes, so, um, so what I've done is I've got just loads, loads of very specific information. And if I had a, like a film crew and a sound engineer and a sunny day, we could just go around and just film it all and I could show it all very specific. But because I've had so much sabotage, like computer sabotage and publisher getting killed on Coronation Day, my webmaster publisher got killed on Coronation Day, 2018, 2nd of June at the hour of Coronation, 12.30 p.m. GMT, 1.30 um, German time. Um, and I was sick at the same time. I've, I've had all these hindrances. And then I look at the Bible and what it says, and, and it does say that you'll be sick for a time and out of the picture for a time. You know? And so it's all, it's all very absolutely specific. You know? it's a, you're talking about you know, if I had an unbiased judge, I could take all this to the judge and go, here it all is, blah, blah, blah. And here's all the evidence. And so what I've done is I've ended up with massive, 
massive document. So when I talk about my claim mm -hmm. to for Prince Pretender status to the High Court, Queen's Bench High Court in London on around the um, 14th of March to around the 15th of May, you know, I'm looking at all this apostilled information and claims and, you know, this like, oh, here's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's like 300 pages there in that one. So it's probably 600 pages that are put in and, and triplicate and apostilled and, and they just, they just ignore it. The judges can't handle it. They absolutely, judges absolutely cannot handle the truth. They cannot handle the evidence and they can't handle the absolutely true and very well-known evidence that the British royal family is fake. So because I brought out the, the Hidden King of England, Armour Christie Unveiling the Rose, which was five volumes, 1,100 pages, 700 colour photos, 400 royal marks, uh, 40 royal marks presented and decodified, and hardback and full colour, um, and a box set. So when I presented that as part of my submission, um, the courts can't handle it because they apparently serve the Queen. They swear two oaths, judges swear two oaths to the Queen. But she's not the Queen. Never has been. And if you look at her um, uh, royal style and titles, it absolutely says that Elizabeth is not the Queen of the people of the United Kingdom. And she is not the Queen of the land of the United Kingdom. And if you look at um, her signature, most of the documents she's signing, she's, she's negating. Um, and if you look at where the records of the royal styles and titles are kept, which is in Canada, they actually state that Elizabeth is an on-again, off-again queen. She's only recorded as queen post-dated, like back-dated, and it's only for about one day a fortnight. And it's completely random. <laughs> it's bizarre. And like, you know, in, in braver days, which is actually when we didn't have the internet and people used to walk around and, and have, have a set of balls on them, they used to go around and challenge authority and go, hang on a minute, no, 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 this, this person's not, not the queen and this person's not the king. Here, it shows it here. And here's the evidence, you know, and they'd have like, a town behind them with torches and pitchforks. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and now what we're getting is just all these mamby-pamby people sitting um, in you know, their office chair throwing comments at the internet. And what's happened with the internet and, and the, the so-called truth movement in England is it has become militarized. And virtually everyone in it is working for the military in some way. It's actually a sabotage exercise. It's not an information exercise. I don't know if you found the same in Holland, but yeah, very much <laughs> here, 95% like of the people are agents. They're agents, just agents. No, I, I made a list, but it's no longer public because uh, it brought me nothing but trouble. But uh, I can prove many of these so-called truthers out there, they are spreading disinformation. Some of them oh, yeah. are not doing it consciously, but uh, some are doing it. So, and I didn't want to make a very, uh, uh, yeah, precious line between them because it's it's hardly uh, pos not really good possible. Anyway, the truth movement is also here in the Netherlands, but also anywhere I d I've investigated, Greg, uh, uh, either people who are really want to confuse you or people who are confused themselves, and um, that's not not really helpful. So, oh, the other thing, yeah. the other thing I found is that Prince Charles is actually employing people under psychiatric supervision, right? So mental patients okay. to um, attack people that are telling the truth, especially the truth about the royal family. Like um, when when my um, when my publisher died, they got a mental patient to attack me and actually steal one of my websites, and then he actually introduces my website. He stole greghallett.com. And he introduces it as, let me see, let me see, what's it called? It's just some, some hilarious thing. Um, actually, I could probably go online and, and find it. It's just as easy. Um, so, uh, hang on a sec. Um, 
uh, um, yeah, maybe it's not real. We, what you can also do, Greg, is I'll show you the uh, slide that you prepared, and we talk a little bit about that because I think the okay. time is also running out quickly. And this interview for me is just uh, an, an opportunity. Okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah. I've got it. I've got it. Oh, so okay. greghellet.com now comes up as Greg Hellet Gambling Addiction Treatment. <laughs> <laughs> so your your URL has been sold to somebody else. Uh, yeah, well, well, well they, the sabotage was so in, incredible. They they stole my three websites. They um, sabotaged my um, um, book sales. They sabotaged my Amazon account. They sabotaged my bank account. Sabotaged my income. Stole oh. my car. Stole my camera, etc., etc., etc. So now this website, Greg Hallett Gambling Addiction Treatment, is still promoting my interviews and still selling my books, but it's got like a two-page disclaimer. And they don't own any of my books. You know, these people have never bought my books, but they're actually a mental patient. He's a mental patient working for Prince Charles. <laughs> That's very insane. Yeah, but uh, your real website, just to say it for, for clarity, is kingof.uk. Yeah. So that's dub, 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 king of dot uk. So I'm just slowly building it up again with, with new interviews, you know. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's quite fantastic what's been happening. Um, and you kind of know you're telling the truth the more you get targeted. You know, yeah, if you're not yeah. telling the truth, they want you there. No, it's a compliment, but it's not always easy to get this compliment. Because yeah, like the CIA says, the CIA are only happy when everything everyone believes is false, right? And the Catholic Church wants illegitimate monarchs on the throne because they're easier to control. Yeah, because they can, can blackmail them. In the Netherlands, the very same. It's, it's a complete scam. It's a hoax, but uh, yeah, they have yeah, so much. Something, yeah. something about Queen Juliana being born in 1909 and, and the, their baby had... Um, uh, Down syndrome, so they swapped it with the neighbor farmhouse baby who was born at the same time, and that became Queen Juliana with the cleft palate. That's absolutely correct. I talked to uh, uh, someone who was close to a witness there, so it, it was all done, and people are speaking out. And but but the brainwashing in the Netherlands is so strong because yeah, there's a huge PR campaign about this family. They are the yeah the perfect citizens, and they they are lovely people. But they, they lie, they cheat, and most of all, they rob. They're, they're legalized robbers, and they, uh, that's why I call him the robber king, because he's, he's nothing but a, yeah, but, but a robber. And, yeah. uh, and a liar, too. Yeah. Uh, well, we've got the same thing in Britain. Absolutely. Like, um, Queen Elizabeth II is not a queen and not even a princess. She wasn't the daughter of King George VI, and she wasn't the daughter of Elizabeth Bell's lion. She was the daughter of, um, she was a sperm donor baby from Winston Churchill's sperm. And the carrier of the sperm was Elizabeth Bowles Lyons' maid. So at the same time, Queen Elizabeth II was gestating in Kensington. In Kensington, they brought out Lyons' maid ice cream to show that the baby was Lyons' maid and not Elizabeth Bowles' lion, right? <laughs> And then Elizabeth Bell's Lyon went to France and married there and died of a heart condition at the age of 50 um, in 1950, which is the same age and cause of death as her brother. So the Queen Mother Elizabeth was um, Elizabeth Bell's Lyon's maid. And um, Elizabeth is the daughter of a maid and her nickname in aristocratic Circles is Lily Le Bon, which is Elizabeth the Maid. Right, that's what she gets called, the Maid. Yeah, <laughs> because the inner circles know this. I've I've seen a presentation of you, Greg, in where you had a complete lineage overview and all kinds of lines and names and pictures. Very impressive. Yeah. But yeah, from the camera point of view, from where I was seeing it, I couldn't read it all. So it would be great if that kind of information would be available on a picture which you can zoom in on. And I then, would have got, I've yeah. got a poster, it's in a poster about this big by about four foot that I sell. Oh, okay. So I've still got, yeah. still got about four left, you know, 
because you can't actually do it in a JPEG. One is it's like fifteen hundred hours work that, and um, you can't actually put it in a JPEG and get enough information. You actually have to scroll down the screen to. Pretty much the only way we can do it is to buy a, a big print copy, you know, and then send it over through uh, mail. Old yeah, mail. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 the best way to do it, I and mean, because you can study it and study it and study it. And, um, yeah, that was that was a phenomenal amount of work. That is an idea yeah. to show the the picture that we prepared for this uh, talk. Is that good? It's a bit, yeah, bit of a yeah, yeah. yeah. Show that. Show that. It comes back to the uh, beginning of the book. Yeah, I, I forgot to check my time, but we'll see. Uh, I get a warning when our time is over. Okay. I hope this is readable for everyone. Can you talk us through this, uh, Greg? Yeah, sure. So, so um, you know, my graphics are a bit delayed because my keyboard was sticking and I was. I was having to retype every sentence three or four times. So I've just finished this image. So there's um, a few space gaps missing, etc. cetera. Um, so what I've done is I've prepared 24 four pages of documents deciphering bits in the Bible to real events. And um, uh, then uh, I've just put it all into the timeline um, of what the Bible says. So if you look at the red line, that's the timeline. So um, if you look just below the, on the left-hand side, uh, 14th of March to the 15th of May, 2015, um, I made a claim in the Queen's Bench High Court in the UK in Worcester as Prince Pretender and to be recognised as Prince Pretender. And that's the 600 pages of documents and apostilled, et cetera. Apostilled means it's notarized in another country, and then apostilled means you can take it from the other country and bring it to England and have it heard. Okay. And it also means that it's got the certification of a judge and that the opposition has to absolutely prove that the document is either a fraud or the information is a fraud, otherwise it's accepted, and none of that happened. So the documents were accepted, and in the courts, they refused to hear the case, but I showed them up for being biased, and they were actually using my the £10,000 lodgement fee for money laundering. Um, and they, it's 600 pages, and they got the document at 4.30 p.m., and then the next day by 9 a.m., they'd made the decision. They'd read 600 pages. <laughs> So speed, what actually speed what reading? Actually, yeah. What actually happened was that the papers were sent from Worcester to um, Temple Bar for all the lawyers to study, and they were sent to um, um, Salforth in northwest Manchester, where MI5, MI6, and the Mossad decide all the legal cases. So what they did is they got a. I demanded it be heard by a Queen's Bench. High Court QC judge. And the person that heard it was the lowest form of judge. His name was Martin Parry, and he was a district court circuit judge with links to pedophile minding. And he heard, he, he was the one who didn't hear the case and who read it in a miraculous five minutes and um, then made a decision which was biased. So, um, uh, he was using a false status. He signed off that he was Queen's Bench High Court and he was actually District Court Circuit Judge. So that was absolute fraud. So I exposed him as, um, as a fraud, exposed Martin Parry as a fraud and recused him. And then the next judge who looked at it took recusing the judge on the basis of 40 counts of bias, recusing as an appeal to appeal. And it wasn't an appeal to appeal at all. It, it's a standard practice, and it's very simple, but the judges don't like to acknowledge it. It's a very easy piece of law to use. You recuse a judge because he's biased. Mm -hmm. You show the bias, he's recused. So the judges were not acting on the law. Because they weren't acting on the law and they weren't acting on due process, and both judges have shown 
combined 80 counts of bias, which I actually wrote up, I was then allowed to make my own decision and, and have them challenge it or not challenge it. And they didn't challenge it and they accepted the challenge in my favor. So the, the conclusion awesome. was that the conclusion was that by tacit passive acquiescence that the Queen's Bench High Court of the United Kingdom was acknowledging me as Prince Pretender to the United Kingdom with the support of Temple Bar and um, um, Salforth and Manchester and MI5, MI6 and the Mossad. And what that did was begin the timeline, the biblical timeline of the 1290 or 1335 days or the three and a half years. Right, and that ended in the Paradise Fires, which were from the 8th of November to the 25th of November. And in between was the 14th of November, which is Prince Charles' 70th birthday. Right, and what it looks like is Prince Charles stole the kingship of the United Kingdom because he knew it's a true prince pretender. He stole. Kingship of the United Kingdom on the 18th, of the, on the 20th of April 2018, didn't tell anyone. And then what the Bible says is he will have a short trial as king and we'll see what his metal is. And that Prince Charles caused, organized, sphere of influence, the fires in paradise, which fulfill the a whole lot of the Bible. I call them rapture and paradise lost fires. Right. Okay, quite a story. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that um, Charles is the Antichrist, A N T I Christ, the opposite of Christ. And that he, what he did was cause hell and paradise. And that the towns either side, of paradise are called hell and dead. <laughs> um, uh, so if I can, I can. I've given you an overview, but I can, I can sort of read it out. You know what the what the fires are called, or what the what the towns are called. Yeah, please um, do so. Um, I just want to give you the stage uh, to to show your view on uh, on on. The, yeah, because I yeah. think it's a very important book, the book of Daniel. And uh, yeah, I tried to make yeah. sense out of it too, but you come up with your interpretation. It, 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 is, it is and it isn't. It's, it's kind of like, um, here we go, yeah, hell. Um, hell. Uh, it, it, it kind of is and it isn't. It's... Um, Revelation is more important. Revelation is, is very simply incredibly important. Um, and the last page of the Bible is basically all you need to read. And it mentions the word come five times. And at the same time, we had Tropical Storm Greg off Mexico um, on the, the, the 6th to the 25th, 26th of July 2017 and Mexico has got an X in it and X marks the true king of England according to the Rosicrucians and the prior to Sion. Um, so if you read Mexico, it actually reads me, true king of England, I, C, O. And then you join the word repeatedly together and it says me, true king of England, I come. That's what Mexico means. And that's all codified in the very last page of the Bible. And it's actually the most important and the easiest to read. Um, so I can switch off this presentation here yeah? because we don't talk about this anymore, I think. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, yeah. sure. So what we might do is actually, you probably timed out about. So let's, let's time out and then call me back and then we'll, um, I'll read my stuff. Yeah, that's good. I think we, we just wrap up this episode and then we'll see how we continue. 
but my main purpose was because uh, yeah I've been I'm studying many things for <laughs> for many years now yeah at least 10 years I'm, I'm doing full-time research and I never never came across your name and uh, somebody sent me an email and I was really surprised but because yeah what you say is very interesting and it has so many connections with it, what I'm researching so I thought how come I never heard of you? How come I've never seen a video or an interview? And um, and I thought maybe I'm not the only one who has this problem that I don't know you. So um, let me make a video like we're doing now, so that at yeah. least at least the people who who follow my channel get in touch with you and your work, and then they can look up your name. And because there are many more interesting videos already on you uh, about about your work online, so. Um, I think it, that's that's the main reason why I wanted to uh, give you the stage, so to say, because yeah. I, I think your work is very very fascinating. Good, thanks. Yeah, it's a, I've been massively suppressed, massively suppressed. You, you wouldn't believe. Yeah, it's, well, it's I absolutely believe. phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah. I'm basically, you know, the number of registration hits I have on the internet is ten percent of what it was twelve years ago. <laughs> Yeah, and normally, normally things <laughs> won't go up. But, yeah, normally things. And whenever yeah. I actually do another interview, my hit rate goes down. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so of course we know there's censorship, but uh, yeah, at least with my channel from Pateo Media, I try to uh, yeah give you the full attention that you deserve. And we'll see, right. we'll see how we continue from here. But I want to thank you for now for your time, and most of most of all for. Yeah, all the years of research that you put into this because uh, can you you said 1500 hours for the, the graph but in total how much time did you spend on researching this since 1999 so it's 20 years now 20 November years. 1999 and in November it'll be 20 years yeah well yeah um, yeah yeah and and this is what you full-time do you don't have any any slave job or something else besides uh, what what they did is they in the New Zealand New Zealand the whole schism of New Zealand um, stole everything blew up my cars um, tried to murder my child um, tried to murder me a dozen times uh, blew up my cars again attacked my car outside the High Court had hearings where I was not notified in the court used a whole lot of different spellings of my names and thirteen judges all to delay a case where I was exposing the president of the law society um, of the previous years as a heroin trafficker and the main heroin trafficker. And what I've found since then is that the president of the law society and now the deputy prime minister, his partner, were targeting me with the heroin because they believed I was the Holy Grail on the basis of the Monty Python movies, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, mm. where they've got the cave wall and it's my name written on the cave wall and it says seven, Gregory Hallett 777, um, uh, which means the shin and the times of the end and the highest representation on earth. And the end times, it's the beginning of the end times day. And then in the next movie, five years later, that was 1975, and 3rd of April, the Holy Grail. And the Holy Grail, Holy Grail is an anagram of my name as well. And I was standing in Tauranga, and Tauranga Harbour is the biggest volume harbour in New Zealand. And I was just turned 15, and I was watching um, six men, two of them in diving suits, and they were bringing a pallet, which had been broken up from the middle and had dark blue and black jerry cans hanging off it and had been dumped off an ocean line or a ship into the harbour and they're dragging it through the harbour and they were taking it up to Winston Peters place who was my neighbour about 400 metres from where I lived and he wasn't the Deputy Prime Minister then but he was sharing a house and an office with the person who became the President of the New Zealand Law Society who was the head of the Mr. Asia Heroin Trafficking Syndicate and also Prince Philip's agent in New Zealand. So they were targeting the heroin at me very, very directly um, because they thought that I was the Holy Grail based on the Monty Python movies. And in the life of Brian, when they, it, Jesus, Brian's playing Jesus and he's in his, in his apartment upstairs and there's about 40 people in the room and um, they're all chatting around him and one woman grabs onto his coat and says, 
lay your hands on me, Greg, not Brian or Jesus, right? And then at the same time, John Cleese says, S of man, because he can't say son of man, right? Um, so they went, oh, shit, okay, so we've really got to attack this guy. And even before that, at the age of 11, four years before, they um, killed my girlfriend in a hit and run accident because she was, you know, calling me on the phone saying all nice, you know, girly stuff, you know what they do. Um, so they've been attacking me since I was 11 and, and since I was 15. And by the time I finished seventh form when I'm 18, I'm kind of blacklisted. And by the time I finished university, I was blacklisted. So from the age of 24 to 49 in New Zealand, uh, 48 in New Zealand, so that's like 25 years, I was only allowed to work five years. So I wasn't even allowed to work in my own country, you know. So they've done everything they can to sabotage me um, away from a normal life. Like, you know, I could just go on and on. I've actually written three volumes, which are A4, one 600 pages, 300 pages, and 300 pages on all the corruption that they absolutely targeted at me because they believe that I am this um, Monty Python character, you know, the Holy Grail. So, um, and, and, you know, it fits my name. And um, the Monty Python movies were actually funded by George Harrison, who was um, in the Beatles. And the Beatles were guided somewhat by Tavistock. And the Tavistock Institute had some of the secrets. And also in 1968, Queen Elizabeth II had put my name on the coins, on the UK coins. So the UK coins read, um, Queen Elizabeth II is two, Greg, and then Elizabeth has the, the letters H-A-L-E-T, which is Hallett. And the letters left over is um, I-B-E-Z, and then we have these sayings, three strikes and you're out, so that E becomes an I, yeah? And you look at the Z in reverse and it's an S. So it says, Elizabeth II, Greg, Hallett, Ibis. And the tradition received is the king is delivered by the Ibis. So what Elizabeth did, she put my name on the coins from 23rd of April, 1968, went on the 5P coin. The last coin it went on was two pound coin on the 15th of June, 1998. And that is 11,011 days apart. <clears throat> and 11 means M. So that spells M0M, which is mum, right? <laughs> and then they, then they named me in um, um, Logan, Wolverine, uh, X-Men movie, Logan, uh, in 2017. And then in The Mummy, and then in Baby Driver, which has got mum, written on the cassette cases five times. Um, and they, right at the end of Logan, they changed Wolverine's name from James to Joey. So he's Joseph Howlett, which is very close to Joseph Hallett. And then um, at the same time that they were filming the end of it, they took me to hospital. The military took me to the Crown Hospital and changed my name from Hallett to Howlett. So that I had the name Joseph Howlett and, and Wolverine had the name Joey Howlett, right? And then in the mummy, the, play, um, the, the mummy plays Isis and she says, um, uh, Joseph, you are my chosen. Howlett, do you accept? Right? So they're saying Joseph Howlett is Isis chosen. Um, so, you know, it's just... It's absolutely blatant. So I'm, I'm kind of in five movies. You know? <laughs> so, I, you know, it's kind of a wake-up call because you, you want to deny that you're in this position like Prince Pretender and Bible Predictive and all that sort of stuff because it sounds like, you know, all of those tosses in Christianity that go, <laughs> I am, you know. So, um, so, you know, all the stuff is like, what they've done is they've completely denied me a life. Absolutely, I do not have an ordinary life at all. I'm not allowed to work anywhere in the world. I'm basically not allowed money, and somehow I have to survive. I'm not allowed to sell books. My interviews are really suppressed, and I'm then named in all of these movies, and I've got all these legal documents, and I've got all these super important royal marks. Like I've got the most important royal mark, 
from Queen Victoria. It's a letter and it says, assemble him claimant. Right, and that letter was given to me three times. Right, so obviously even the true royal family wants to assemble me as claimant to the throne and crown of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and all Ireland. So, you know, I have to do it because I just don't have any other life. It's just been, my life's been absolutely stolen. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm surprised you can laugh about it, but maybe that's the only way to deal with it, Greg, because otherwise you might get insane or something. Or, Well, you know, yeah, you, you do kind of question your own validity in the universe, but then mm -hmm. something comes along and says, no, nah, it's you, you know. So, um, so basically, I just run with it and have to run with it, and, and um, you know, have my friends say, you know, "Pull your head and laddie," which is always a good thing. And um, then I just, I just record the stuff, you know, like Diana, Princess Diana knew about me, so she conceived Prince William on my twentieth birthday and gave birth to Prince Harry on my twenty-third birthday. She absolutely knew who I was. You know? Okay. And she was born 77 days before me. And what 77 means is the father is fulfilled in the son. That's the code for 77. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And like she went to Riddlesworth School, which is, you know, primary school kids. And then I go for a swim and then the bus pulls up full of Riddlesworth school kids that go and swim in the same pool. So, you know, the meaning of that is that Diana actually went to school around here. She used to collect guinea pigs um, and um, was swimming in the same psychic waters. So, like, when she um, left Charles secretly and conceived a child with King Juan Carlos of Spain, um, at the same time, the, the crow called Grog, like, which is Greg, but with an O, left um, uh, the Tower of London, right? And my nickname was actually Grog in school two years earlier because I had really bad acne and I used to pop them and then cover them with meth. So when I went to school, I used to smell like a meth addict, you know, methylene spirits. You know? <laughs> so my, my nickname was Grog and then the crow leaves um, the Tower of London called Grog at the same time Elizabeth is conceived, uh, at the same time, Princess Diana is conceiving a child with King Juan Carlos of Spain. And what the legend is that when the crows leave the Tower of London, it's the end of the British royal family. So what happened was with the birth of Elizabeth in World War II, the crows actually did leave the Tower of London. And Winston Churchill replaced them with a whole lot of new crows and, and clipped their wings so they couldn't fly. Okay. Yeah. They couldn't fly away to give their parents a, that the that the tr that the um, um, events that the prediction had not transpired. So what's happening with me is that all the predictions have transpired through me, including that the person who writes the books will be from Lemuria. So that's New Zealand, Australia, Papua New Guinea. So that's happened, um, and they've even. Um, got the royal styles and titles for Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, and Grenada, and linked them all together. And the code for that for Grenada is G R E G, a uh, G R E, and then Nada. Nada is nothing. N A D A is nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So if you get G R E and link it together, you get G R E G, R E G R E G. So Greg, re Greg, re Greg, which means Greg, it's all about Greg, right? That's the code. And then what they did is they got the, uh, most of the rural style, style and titles in countries are a year, year apart, right? You get Australia's 1973, New Zealand's 1974, Papua New Guinea's 1975, and then the royal family gets a rural tour there and a rural tour here and a rural tour here, and it's all white gloves and fanfare. Um, so what they did with the New Zealand rural styles and titles in Granada is they had them um, one day after the other. So New Zealand was New Zealand Day, 6th of February, 1974, and Granada was the 7th of February, 1974, a day later. But New Zealand is 17 hours ahead of Granada. So 
5 p.m. on the 6th of February 1974 was exactly the same time as the 10 a.m. on the 7th of February in Granada, right? So that's what they did because they wanted to show that the Royal Styles and Titles in New Zealand was Granada. Hmm. Greg, it's all about Greg, Gregory, Gregory, Greg, right? So it's all about a Greg, a Greg in New Zealand, right? And then what they did with the 1973 Australian Royal Styles Titles, 1974 New Zealand, 1975 Papua New Guinea. 1973 in Australia was on the 14th of September. 1975 in Papua New Guinea was on the 16th of September. New Zealand was on the uh, 1974. The in-between date is the 15th of September, 1974, which was my birthday and my 13th birthday. So it was like for my bar mitzvah, they're giving me the rural styles and titles of New Zealand through Australia, okay. New Zealand, Papua New Guinea. So, you know, this, they just codify this stuff. When you see it, it's actually really obvious. And when you lay claim to it, it sounds like, oh, this guy's just looking for a bar fight. <laughs> well, you have to admit, it's a lot to take in, uh, uh, Greg. Well, yeah, I'll put it, I'll put it up and... I put it up in graphics before and it's like, you know, if I do a really clear job, it gets less hits. If I say it loosely, so people have to write it down and work it out. I actually get more people listening. Okay. So what, what they say is that everything has to be in sequence and everything has to be in proportion. Mm -hmm. So that's the way they get information across in sequence and proportion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to thank you again for your time and for your sharing all this. Um, as I said, if people want to learn more about you, they can go to your website, kingof.uk, and uh, they can also find your contact details there. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it uh, goes from here. But I think it was a, was a good introduction to your work, I hope. Good. Thanks, Johan. Yeah, you're very welcome. And uh, uh, the viewers, I would say uh, thank you very much for watching this uh, episode and I'll stop recording and now. Namaste.